Welcome back to another DW Business Special. We are looking this time at the latest bans on the popular video sharing app TikTok for government workers in the West. I'm Christy Platson coming to you from Berlin, and I'm joined today by telecommunications expert John Strand of Strand Consult. John, thanks for joining me. You put out a report every year with your predictions on where the mobile telecommunications world is headed. Did you see these bans on TikTok, which is a Chinese-owned company? Did you see these coming? Definitely I've seen it because the debate had been going on in the U.S. for quite some time. And in the U.S. there have been a very clear uh, opinion about these things uh, for quite some time. All right. Well, I want to take a step back and have a look at what actually went down this week. We want to see, is the clock ticking for TikTok? The European Union, the United States, and Canada have all pledged to ban the social app on government workers' devices, with an outright ban also on the cards in the U.S. Now, China's lashed out at this this week, accusing the U.S. of stifling foreign businesses. But is this app safe? TikTok has admitted to tracking the location data of critical journalists. Concerns are growing that the app could be used for spying on users' phones. TikTok owner ByteDance is not the only Chinese tech firm under suspicion. We'll look at, is your personal data safe from TikTok in this business special? Now, John, in your opinion, how much of a security risk does this app pose? I mean, I was on it today. I saw people dancing. I saw pickup artist tips. I mean, what kind of threat is this to national security? Listen, I can understand why a lot of people can't understand these things. Um, let's say it very simple. When you install the app, it says you, you, it come with a lot of things which people basically don't read. And people say yes, 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 because that's a way to get in to all this cool content which people like. Um, the problem is that you basically give TikTok access to your whole digital life, your messaging, your contacts, your pictures, your videos, basically everything was on your phone. And honestly, your phone probably knows more about you than your uh, partner knows about you. So I was, must say, what you're basically saying is, do you want to share your knowledge, your life with TikTok? That's the first question you have to ask yourself. The second thing is, is there a risk that TikTok will share this with uh, the Chinese government or others? And I feel there's a, actually a, a concern. We should have concern about that. Okay, John, I do understand the threat you're laying out there. I mean, we also talk a lot about how American platforms like Facebook are also accessing this kind of information, causing harm, spreading disinformation, hate speech. But we're not talking about banning those American companies. Are we not looking at some degree of anti-China hysteria here with this TikTok ban? Definitely not. It's important to understand in 2017 there came a Chinese security law which basically says that Chinese company can reach out to any Chinese company and ask to get access to the data they have. You must also remember that China is a different system than the one we have in the Western world. Let me say it in a different way. Uh, when Congress, or the Senate in, in the US wants to talk to Mark Zuckerberg and ask him a lot of nasty questions, they take him in front of the Senate, they ask him all the nasty questions and he answers the questions. There's probably a lot of questions which TikTok would not like to answer. Just ask them, what's their view on human rights in China? Just ask them, what's their view on human rights in Hong Kong? What their views on other things? And basically what I'm trying to say is important to say that the American companies come from a country which basically have a justice systems which cannot be compared to what we have in China. And they also come from a democracy where they, uh, what basically China is a dictatorship. Okay, so you're saying that these governments uh, don't like the fact that they don't have the oversight there. I mean, do Western governments have a way of knowing whether Chinese tech companies are are being are spying on them or are being used uh, to spy on them? I should say. I would say it very simple. We have a lot of cases across the world for different things. There have been cases related to Lenovo, cases related to Huawei. We saw the one which actually, when, when I saw the, the one that, that, that TikTok admitted that it had been spying on some journalists that did critical, um, critical stories about them, I said this, this was basically the worst thing they could do because this would be the trigger for, for governments to go in and look at this. And it will also, of course, trick the press. Uh, I, I, I know a lot of journalists, I speak to journalists on a regular basis, and honestly, I don't, I don't believe the finds that there exist any journalists in this world who would like to, to, uh, to, to, to experience the things which we saw those four, four journalists uh, from, from Forbes experience uh, from TikTok site. 
I mean, yeah, certainly not as a journalist. I'll say that <laughs> as well myself. Now, I mean, China, of course, had some strong words about um, these bans. Let's listen to what the foreign minister had to say this week. The United States, the world's number one superpower, is so afraid of a mobile phone application that young people like so much that they completely lack any self-confidence. We firmly oppose the U.S. side's wrong approach of overreaching in national security, abusing national power, and unreasonably suppressing the companies of other countries. Now, as we just heard, a, a large amount, so actually it's nearly 70 percent of teens in the U.S. are using TikTok, according to a Pew Research Center survey. And a bill has now been introduced in the U.S. Um, that, if approved, would give President Joe Biden uh, the right to ban TikTok across the country, so an outright ban uh, for all Americans, not just government uh, workers. So, I mean, TikTok's focus is, of course, on short-form video, and this is a space that American companies, YouTube and Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram, have been moving into uh, for some time now as well. So is this ban also about funneling users back towards American companies? What do you think? Definitely not. I think this is about national security. This is about citizen security. Here in the European Union, we, we see that there's quite much focus on privacy, the use of AI and all those things, uh, where the data is stored and all those things. So, so I don't think this is not about trade policy. And I think it's also important to listen to what the Chinese is actually saying. The things they're communicating on this press meeting yesterday have nothing to do with the message they want to send to us. That is a message they're sending to the Chinese population. That's a part of the national propaganda. It's very important to understand since 1996, uh, the Chinese government had blocked thousands of websites. And the, when, when the China says that we don't have any self-confidence uh, when it comes to these things, um, is, is honestly, I think that's fits, that's, that statement fits much better on China, which basically block for everything. There's a lot of news you can't get access to in China. You cannot even go on BBC. I don't. I think even they're block, blocked for Deutsche Welle in, in China. Um, so I, I, honestly, I, I don't buy that one. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what I wanted to ask you about next. I mean, China is making a big fuss out of it, out of this ban, but I mean, they're all about banning Western technology um, and content. Uh, it sounds like that's pretty much what you're saying as well, right? Yeah, I, I might just say it's, it's an absurd statement, and, and I'm sure that people living uh, behind the the, the, the the iron walls they have in China, or as we call it, the, 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 the digital wall they have in China, uh, there's no doubt about that, that, that they may be buy that story, but people from the free worlds, they, they shouldn't buy that story. We did a report, actually, you're not welcome here, describing all the sites which have been blocked in China since 1996 and why they did a reference to the laws and all those things. Trust me, what politicians is doing in the free world against TikTok is nothing compared to what they do in China and have done for a very long time. Right. I mean, China has also cracked down on its own tech scene. So they're not just cracking down on, on Western companies. Uh, they're, they're cracking down, for example, notably e-commerce giant Alibaba. What is different, though, about a company like ByteDance or telecommunications giant Huawei? Uh, why are these being given you know, wider freedoms than other tech companies in Ch out of China? No, but you could say uh, what's interesting here is that China try to control the world with true technology. And, and Huawei can deliver everything from telecommunications networks to smart cities, et cetera. Uh, and basically, I always says, and when I've been here in Mobile World Congress, I said that is a candy store for dictators. This is a dictatorship in a, in a box. If you want to do mass surveillance of the citizens and all that, these top tech companies in China, they have all the tools and they actually have the best reference uh, because China is a one-party system with one chairman in, 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 the, in the front of the country, which basically don't have any political opponents. I think that's maybe that exists. Probably some politicians would like to be in the same position. But the reality is that, that, that China is actually using technology to suppress their citizens, to suppress human rights. And it's important to understand that we actually in our world, give these Chinese companies more freedom here because we have actually a system where we don't distinguish between Chinese and non-Chinese companies. We have court systems and all those things, but you don't have it the same way in China. So I think it's it's, it's, it's very important to understand what's going on here. And I, I think the risk is is, is real. I, w I would say the risk of using, using TikTok can probably be compared with drunk driving or buying a car without seatbelts and, and airbags.
Okay, all right, certainly an interesting comparison there. I mean, talk to me a little bit more about what you just said about China being so strong in this uh, space, this technological space, and maybe this espionage space, you could say, in some ways. How did they get to that point? It's not like Chinese technology companies suppress Western technology companies. Those in the Western world producing telecommunication infrastructure in the technology is just as good as the, Italian, uh, as the Chinese, probably in, in some ways even better. But but what's interesting is that, that China is a surveillance society. And you can say, where well, we in our part of the world use technology to improve citizens' lives, to create welfare and doing all those things. In China, they also do the same things, but they have another layer on top of it. And that is that use the same technology to, to, to mass surveillance of the citizens and actually to, to, to suppress parts of the citizens, like we saw with the Muslims in China. Okay, well, separate from fears about spying and security, the U.S. and Europe are certainly also worried about the influence a Chinese-owned social media app like TikTok could have. Uh, this is uh, problems with social media networks is already an issue for a, a country like the U.S. just handling its own homegrown social networks. Let's listen to a second on what former U.S. Deputy National Security Advisor Matthew Pottinger had to say about this. The bigger coup for the Chinese Communist Party uh, if TikTok is permitted to continue operating in the United States and if WeChat and, and other Chinese platforms are, con are allowed to continue to operate, is that it gives the Chinese Communist Party the ability to manipulate our social discourse, the news, uh, to censor and suppress or to amplify what tens of millions of Americans see and read and experience and hear uh, through their social media app. So, John, what do you think? What is the bigger risk here regarding TikTok? Is it the spying and having access to the data, or is it this potential to influence users with misinformation or propaganda? I, I think that I, I think one thing, if we talk about when, when government says that civil servants are not allowed to have it on their phone, I think this is about uh, spying, getting access to information, and so on. So that's one thing. Thing, it's not an either or question it, it's, it would be both parts if you could say like that what he's actually trying to say is that he fear that because TikTok can decide which kind of videos people see they actually can start to feed young people with videos which have certain opinions and that's basically that you use ai to actually to 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 show it you must remember what many of the videos which young people watch on TikTok. Uh, also, grown-up people is videos which TikTok suggests to them, and in that way, you actually can decide to what kind of things you want to throw, show to them, and which kind of things you want to keep away from their eyes. So, in that way, I think uh, the, the the fear is that long-term it can have an impact uh, on people's uh, view of the world, if you could say like that. And unfortunately, we live in a world where a lot of young people, and even also grown-up people, don't watch classic classic news like yours and they get a lot of their news from social media and so on. Uh, and in that way, we have actually an information gap between you know, the real world where real journalism is producing critical journalism to the entertainment world, where the entertainment world is basically providing with more and more news uh, compared to how it was in the past. Yeah, John, that's a really great point. I mean, both TikTok and the American Civil Liberties Union have, have said that a TikTok ban would be bad for free speech um, in the U.S. And they're saying this uh, for one reason, because a lot of media companies, journalists, uh, human rights advocates um, are already active on TikTok. Deutsche Welle is also on TikTok. I mean, what do you make of this fact that both TikTok and the American Civil Liberties Unit, uh, Union are saying that the ban is a bad idea for free speech. Honestly, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Okay, it's it's very important. I I grew up in Denmark uh, during the Cold War. I've seen what's happened behind the Iron Curtain. I was in Berlin when the war went down in '89. Um, and 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 freedom of speech, human rights, is something I think is very important. Um, but we also must say there is a risk, and 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 basically, TikTok had not been able to give the guarantees and not been able to do a lot of things. So so I think it's I I definitely agree with with those who says it will, will could have a negative impact on free speech etc. Uh, you can say what is the challenge? The key challenge is we live in a 
democracy where you have a lot of freedom. I come from Denmark. We had some cartoonists who did these Muhammad cartoons. Uh, there was a lot of people in the Middle East who get, got very upset with it. And our government didn't want to interfere because in Denmark we have a freedom of speech. It was totally legal to do these things and the government couldn't interfere with it. Living in democracy with freedom of speech has a lot of dilemmas. And, and I think the TikTok story is, is probably a little bit more complicated than a lot of people realize. And it's a very good case to use to create a debate of how do we want our society to evolve in the future? Because it's present a dilemma. You know, we have the freedom of speech on the one side or the other side, the risk of surveillance or abuse, abuse of the platform. And, 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 and this is something we need to discuss because we're moving from an analog society to a digital society. All right, well, talking about this TikTok story and where it's going, I mean, John, your whole business is about making predictions in this telecommunications space. If you uh, were looking in your crystal ball right now, tell me, what do you think is coming next? I think we will see a number of governments across the world who basically say civil servants or municipalities. We've seen a lot right now in Denmark, starting the, in the parliament, and then there have been the public servants, uh, municipalities, government institutions, and so on. We see that spread all over the world. Um, then there will be some users who will, will, uh, will, will basically uh, opt out of TikTok and say this is probably not good. One of my friends, he told me the other day, his, his daughter came and said, Daddy, you have TikTok on your phone. And his 12 years old daughter said, Daddy, give me your phone. And she just deleted the TikTok from his, her wow. father's phone. Uh, so I'm, I'm just saying is we will see that. And then it will, we will have basically a good case to, to discuss how we want to have uh, our society evolve in the future and how the, digital, uh, how the democracy have to work in a, in, in a digital society. And I think if, if it's cost TikTok's life to to create a, a, a robust debate of how our, our future or this digital society should be in the future, and we can get a good society in the future with, with freedom, uh, I would be very happy. I have no problem with that. Right. Well, we'll have to leave it there. I want to say many thanks to you, John Strand, telecommunications expert uh, of Strand Consult, for your insights today. Also, thanks to you, our viewers, for watching. If you'd like more business stories, I'd encourage you to check out our latest Business Beyond special on how Russia's year-long war has changed our global economy. I'm Christy Platson in Berlin. I'll catch you next time.